I'm Elaine. And I'm Kathy. We're graduate students at the University of Central Oklahoma. And we're here to talk about body focused repetitive behaviors, the treatment options for children and adolescents. Body-focused repetitive behaviors is an umbrella term for debilitating repetitive behaviors that target one or more body regions. The two body-focused repetitive behaviors included in the DSM-5 are categorized as trichotillomania, also known as hair pulling disorder, and excoriation, or skin picking disorder. These used to be considered nervous habits and unworthy of scientific attention. Recently, they have been recognized as more than nervous habits due to the distress and impairment it can cause an individual. Body-focused repetitive behaviors can be either focused or unfocused. Focused behaviors include planning to set aside a time to engage in the body-focused repetitive behavior or waiting until people are not looking. Unfocused behaviors occur when the individual is unaware that they are engaging in said behavior. Primarily, the behavior occurs while the individual is zoned out and will only realize it occurred after a pile of hair has accumulated or their skin is bleeding. 75% of body-focused repetitive behaviors are unfocused, while 25% are focused. Body-focused repetitive behaviors can be a response to a sensation, such as itching, tingling, or pain. The individual believes they can only get relief from that sensation by engaging in the behavior. It can also occur without a sensation, often described that their hands feel like a magnet to their hair or skin. Body-focused repetitive behaviors often begin as an individual perceives an irregularity on their body. They may have an urge to fix the perceived irregularity, such as acne, a coarse or curly hair, a scar, or bump on the skin. Most individuals who engage in these behaviors are not intending to inflict pain or cause bodily harm but rather they are upset by the resulting damage to the skin, hair, or nails, making significant repeated efforts to decrease or stop the behavior. Although the function of the behavior varies, it is often experienced as self-soothing or assistive in the regulation of emotions or the nervous system arousal. In the DSM-4, trichotillomania was included in the chapter of impulse control disorders. Rather than being considered its own disorder, it was classified under the not otherwise specified category. Now in the DSM-5, it is included in the chapter of obsessive compulsive and related disorders and is listed as its own disorder. The DSM-5 criteria for trichotillomania include A. Reoccurrent pulling out of one's hair, resulting in hair loss. This can be pulled out in clumps or in individual strands. B. Repeated attempts to decrease or stop hair pulling. C. The hair pulling causes clinical significant distress or impairment in social, occupational, or other important areas of functioning. D. The hair pulling or hair loss is not attributed to another medical condition. E. The hair pulling is not better explained by the symptoms of another mental disorder. In trichotillomania, the hair can be pulled from any body region where hair grows. The most common places are the scalp, eyebrows, and eyelids. Hair can be pulled by fingers, tweezers, combs, or brushes, or even more creative ways. Hair pulling can be brief and sporadic, occurring throughout the day, or can occur less frequently and during a more concentrated period of time. Most individuals have a ritual in their hair pulling. It may be twirling the hair, smelling the hair, or tasting it, and this can occur before or after it has been pulled. Individuals may pull hair in different places, so hair loss may not be clearly visible. The behavior can be preceded, but not always, by anxiety or boredom and can lead to gratification, pleasure, or sense of relief. Individuals may also have the urge to pull hair from other people, dolls, pets, or car.
Parents may not actually see their child pull their hair. They often find pulled hair on the bed or pillow, or find clumps of hair on the floor or in their clothes. Trick has a 10 to 1 ratio in females to male. Potential explanations include women may seek out treatment more often, or men may blame Trick on socially acceptable male pattern balding, or shave their heads to avoid and hide the symptoms. In young children, Trick is more equally represented in male and females. Trichotillomania manifests equally across cultures, but keep in mind there is little research on cultural differences. Trichotillomania may be seen in infants, but it typically resolves itself during early development. When it occurs in children under the age of 8, it is generally self-correcting. In older children, the onset of trich is usually related to the onset of puberty. Most of the time, if it is chronic if it is left untreated. Although the function of the behavior varies, it is often experienced as self-soothing or helps regulate emotions. In the DSM-4, excoriation was classified as a symptom of other disorders in the category of self-mutilation. It was a footnote in the chapter of impulse control disorders. Now, in the DSM-5, it is listed as its own disorder in the chapter of obsessive compulsive and related disorders. The criteria for excoriation disorder are as follows. A. Recurrent skin picking resulting in skin lesions. B. Repeated attempts to decrease or stop skin picking. C. The skin picking causes clinically significant distress or impairment in social, occupational, or other important areas of functioning. D. The skin picking is not attributed to physiological effects of a substance or other medical condition. E. It is not better explained by symptoms of another mental disorder. The most common places that individuals pick at are the face, arms, and hands. They may pick at healthy skin or minor skin irregularities. Most individuals pick with their fingernails, but they may use tweezers, pins, or other objects. Excoriation can also include skin rubbing, squeezing, lancing, or biting. This behavior may be triggered by anxiety, boredom, or tension, and can lead to a sense of gratification and relief, but this is not always the case. Sometimes it can be focused, but for most individuals, it is an automatic picking that occurs without full awareness. The lifetime prevalence rate of excoriation disorder in adults is 1.4% or a little higher. Three quarters of individuals with excoriation disorder are female. This could be due to the fact that females are more likely to seek treatment, therefore males may be underrepresented. According to the Child Behavior Checklist, 10 to 40 percent of kids pick at their skin and or nose. Keep in mind, this number is most likely an overrepresentation of excoriation because it includes nose picking. The onset of excoriation disorder is typically during adolescence, coinciding with or following the onset of puberty. Specifically, onset is usually between the ages of 11 and 13. Picking sites can vary over time, and the behavior can come and go for weeks, months, and years at a time. The usual course is chronic if the behavior is left untreated. Now that we have given you the information about TRIC and excoriation disorder, it's important to note that these disorders are often comorbid with each other and with other body-focused repetitive behaviors. 80% of patients being treated for TRIC reported another past or present DSM-5 disorder. 30% had history of major depression, while 20% had current major depression. 20% reported past or current eating disorder and or substance abuse disorder. 50% have an anxiety disorder. Especially in children, this social anxiety can be a result of the embarrassment and shame they feel because of their trick. 
Obsessive compulsive disorder is also highly comorbid with body focused repetitive behaviors. Hi, I'm Jane. I started pulling my hair when I was 8 years old. I'm 14 now. It first started when my parents were going through a divorce. I accidentally pulled out a piece of my hair and it felt pretty good. Now my hands feel like a magnet to my hair. They say pull, pull, pull. I've tried to stop, but I can't. Sometimes I even pull hair off my dog. My so-called friends started making fun of me when I started having bald spots. I try to hide them, but I'm not very good at it. My parents don't understand. They think I should just be able to stop. My brother says I pull in order to get attention. Body-focused repetitive behaviors can be very significant and can have a major impact on a child's functioning. The majority spend at least one hour per day picking or pulling, or thinking about it and resisting the urges to do so. Self-esteem is lowered significantly as the behavior's frequency increases. There can also be significant medical complications, such as tissue damage, scarring, or infection. Chronic hair swallowing can also lead to digestive blockage, which can be very dangerous. As you can see, these behaviors can be a major problem for individuals and their families. There is limited information and research on what causes these body-focused repetitive behaviors. Often the behavior starts as an accident and continues because of the relief the child had following the behavior. It typically has childhood onset, peaking in early childhood and early adolescence. Specifically, the onset is generally between the ages of 11 and 13. When onset occurs later in life, the course tends to be more chronic and harder to treat. Duke et al conducted research in 2010 about the genetic, neurobiological, and behavioral components of body-focused repetitive behavior. He concluded that genes can play a role in biological vulnerability and that serotonin and dopamine is linked to impulse control problems, which are related to body-focused repetitive behavior. The behavioral component explains that the behavior is learned and is a coping response to stress and that it is reinforced through tension reduction. There are a few different treatment options for trick and excoriation. The pharmacological approach includes the use of antidepressants. This generally treats the comorbid depression and does not target the behavior specifically. Another treatment option is acceptance and commitment therapy. This works to increase acceptance of thoughts rather than trying to reduce the thoughts by engaging in the behavior. The final treatment option is habit reversal training, or HRT. HRT has the most scientific backing and is the one we will be going into more detail about. A 1973 study by Aswin and Nunn became a landmark study for the effectiveness of habit reversal training. HRT is the most researched and most effective intervention for body-focused repetitive behaviors. As a behavioral intervention, it suggests that the disorder is learned and maintained through classical and operant conditioning. As the model indicates, it takes into account the feelings, thoughts, and sensations surrounding the body-focused repetitive behavior. It also considers the external stimuli or trigger that precedes the behavior. In other words, the emotional experience of pulling hair or skin picking is a, is a cyclical process that may set the stage for future body-focused repetitive behaviors. Before starting habit reversal training, a full assessment should be completed to determine severity. Some examples of assessments include the trick scale for children, the child version, the trick scale for children, the parent version, and the skin picking scale. In habit reversal training, there are three main elements awareness training,
competing response training, and social support. In awareness training, you empower the client to be aware of behavior and thoughts and emotions preceding the behavior. This process includes breaking down the behavior in a concrete, detailed manner, including discussing the rituals that are created by their behavior. In competing response training, an incompatible behavior is cho chosen, such as balling your hand in a fist and squeezing until the urge has gone away. In social support, family members encourage and redirect the individual to use the competing behavior when they notice they are about to engage in their ritual of hair pulling or skin picking. This is extremely important for children who are unaware that they are engaging in their behavior. For more details regarding HRT training, please refer to the training manual listed at the end of this presentation. Potential obstacles for HRT include if a client has an intellectual disability, HRT may not be the appropriate treatment. Or if a child is not motivated to stop their behavior, the change could be extremely difficult. A child may be too young developmentally to understand HRT. While parent involvement is crucial for younger children, in teenagers they may not welcome parental support. We hope you find the information provided useful. Again, for more information on HRT for body-focused repetitive behaviors, please refer to the treatment manual listed on the next slide.